In today's video, we are going to talk about the top three tips for reading the defense post-snap in Madden 18. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and in today's video, I'm going to give you my three tips for reading the defense post-snap in Madden 18. The first thing that I want to suggest you do to read the defense better post-snap in Madden 18 is to look at the safety. So if the safeties are going to tell you one way or the other where they're going as I throw an ugly interception, um, the safeties are going to tell you where everything's happening. So if the safeties drift back, then that means that it's probably cover two. Like if they drift back into the outside, if they drift, um, like if they swap and replace. So if one goes short and one goes deep, it's probably cover three. If one, if both of them go straight back, like directly back, it's probably cover four. So that's going to give you a lot of information that, that you need to know because if it's cover two, then that means that this specific route's open depending on the plays that you're calling. Now, if it is, if you're, if you're doing this and it's cover four, right, then that would mean that the drag route's open on PA post more than likely. Okay. The problem then that most people make though is you, and I talk about all the time using your peripherals. So, the critical thing that you have to understand with reading the defense post snap is that it's such a quick thing. And if you make one little mistake, you can do what I just did. And you can throw an interception and, and they can return it for a touchdown. And it could be really bad. The key is to try to have a pre-snap hypothesis. We've talked about that. So like here, more than likely, we're going to see some type of man-to-man -man pressure. I mean, I shouldn't have called PA post in the last play when I threw the pick. It was a very bad play call by me with based off the look he's coming out. And so like here, bringing a double A gap look, he's got corners backed off. This looks like complete pressure all the way. So what you do is you take Antonio Brown. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to, we're going to block the running back here to give us a little bit more pass protection. We're going to try to go one-on-one -on -one with Antonio Brown. But, but you can see, and then the post-snap hypothesis, so the pre-snap hypothesis was that he was going cover zero and he was blitzing. The post-snap hypothesis was I looked at the safety, and then I looked to the right, I kind of scanned, and I do a quick scan. I call it a quick scan, um, which basically means that I take one, try to get it in one second to where I scan the entire defense to try to figure out what they're doing. We read right, and I saw the pressure come off that left side, so I slid my guy to the, to the other opposite direction. And, and, and as you can see, it worked out for me. This guy is, and, and you kind of get a sense as the game goes on, the second tip that I'm going to recommend in a minute, but you get a sense as the game goes on as to what they're probably going to do. Like you, you, you get a feel like on this down, they're probably going to go cover two man. On this down, they're probably going to go cover zero. On this down, they're going to go cover two. On this front, this look, you, you get the tendencies, right? So against a good defensive play caller, sometimes the tendencies aren't enough, and you need this post-snap reading. So what you look for is you try to figure out, again, I do a quick scan, and what that does for me is it's able to really tell me if they're blitzing. So if they're blitzing me on and off of what side I'm getting pressure, is it the side that I thought I was going to get blitzed on? Again, it's all about confirming that pre-snap hypothesis. What they're showing me and what they're doing, are they the same thing or are they different? Are they doing different things? The next thing and the last thing that's really critical, but before I get to that, I do want to encourage all of you guys, if you're watching this video and it's your first time watching anything on my YouTube channel, I want to encourage you to check out my premium membership. It's in the description and it has all of my tools. Basically, all of my content for one year goes right into this premium membership. It includes six eBooks. Um, I think uh, right now we're sitting at seven updates, uh, seven update videos for you. So it just includes so much. So check that out if you haven't already. But the last thing that I would suggest to you, if you're really trying to get better at post snap reads, the quick scan is, is really difficult. And again, I've talked about having reference points. And so I use the safeties as reference points, basically by looking at the safeties, then I can see out of the corners of my eyes, the corners and the middle linebackers and the defensive line. Then the last thing that I really suggest you do is step up in the pocket with your quarterback and Man, like when I say step up, you take the left stick. What that means is you take the left stick and you literally pull him forward, 
push him forward up a little bit because of the pass rush, the way the game works, the edge rush will, will sack him if he just stands there. You have to push him up. But when you're stepping up into the pocket, what you want to do is you want to try to figure out what when, what is open, uh, what what area of the field is open. So, for example, if they are if they are ha- have a lot of people on the inside of the field, then that would mean that the outside of the field is open. And on every play that I provide you in the premium membership, you have receivers that are going to go inside and outside, depending on which receiver it is. It, it varies, but you're, you're going to have someone that's going over the middle. You're going to have someone that's going on the outside. You're going to have someone that's going up the seam pretty much every play. Okay, It, it could depend and vary which side, or but, but generally you're going to have something like that. What I would suggest you do with this um, with this strategy of, of trying to throw to the open side of the field is when you're doing that quick scan, you're trying to figure out what area is open, and then you want to glance to the, to the, to the open area. What you don't want to do is you don't want to look at the receivers. Okay, There's no reason to look at the receivers. You already know what route they're going on. What you want to do is you want to look at the defenders. And if the defenders are covering, are covering um, specific areas of the field, then you can check out and go, go to whatever is open. You want to find the open area of the field, not necessarily the open receiver. Because once you find the open area of the field, then you're going to see the receiver coming through on his route. More than likely. Okay, more than likely, at least in the plays that I provide you, you're you're going to be able to see that. So, again, the critical thing with the post-snap reads, they're very, very difficult to do. But I would say if I could just give a couple of things that I've seen work for me, um, one of the, the – it's just so important to really, really – I can't believe I completed that. But it's just so important to when – you're, when you're going through the process – to not pull the trigger so fast, okay? Um, it's 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 much better to throw the ball away, and that's something that took me a long time to learn. So it's a very difficult process. It's, it's there are a couple things you can do. Basically, you read the safeties. You try to use your peripheral vision. You try to use your your data that you've collected throughout the game. What have they been doing? What is the consistent themes? What are the things that you can pretty much bank on that they're probably going to do again? You can do all of that. And um, and that's going to help you. But again, it's going to take time. It's going to take rep- repetitions. It's going to take practice to get better at it. You're not going to be better at it overnight, um, even if you do apply these tips. So again, let me know how you're doing. Let me know how these tips are working for you. And let me know, like, what are the points of struggle? What are the points that you're saying, you know, I'm throwing interceptions here and I don't understand why? For me, most of the time, I understand why I throw the interception. It's just getting my brain to retrain a little bit so that it stops doing it. Um, that's, that's what's critical for me. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching today's video, and we will see you tomorrow.